Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Vicious and welcome back to a new GNS3 lab to help you with your Cisco training and certification. Today we're moving on to the sixth video in the series and this is going to be the second lab that we're doing from the GNS3 Workbench website. So in the last video I explained what that website was and showed it to you. In this video we'll go ahead and jump right into our lab to save us some time. Uh, we're doing ICND1 series right now and we did IPv4 last video. Today we're doing the DHCP configuration exercise. So that's what lab we already have loaded up here. And here's our instructions. I'll run through those first. That way we know what our goals are. Uh, it says we're a network administrator at Acme and that we need to configure two routers, Acme 1 and Acme 2, so that PC 1 and 2 are located IP addresses via DHCP that you configure. So we're actually configuring DHCP here on Acme 1 and Acme 2 must be configured with an IP helper address so that PC2 gets its address from the Acme 1 DHCP server. So Acme 1 is going to be our DHCP server. Acme 2 needs to relay those DHCP requests to that router so that those requests can make it to PC2. Um, the routers are mostly configured for us. We're focusing on the DHCP so they've already got their host names, they've already got OSPF for routing, there's been passwords set and already logged into the routers and the IP addresses have also already been assigned so fast Ethernet interfaces and everything are assigned so here is our task our task is to configure Acme 2 so the DHCP code that we just said that and to configure our DHCP server with the following specifications so we need PC1 to have an address larger than 1.10. We need PC2 to have an address larger than 2.20. Uh, we have domain name, domain server, DNS server, a lease time, and is there anything else in here? We just make sure that when we're done we can ping and we can ping acme.com which means we need DNS because we're resolving a name to an IP address and ping mail. Same thing again. So we'll leave our information right there because that's the most important part. So let's go into global configuration mode. And the first thing I know, and this is a good practice, is if we're starting at a certain address, and these are 24-bit uh, masks, I assume. Let's actually, I don't think it gave us our subnet mask when we saw this. Yeah, it is, they're 24-bit. They're so I know as a 24-bit mask on these interfaces that we have 255 on here and then it's going to go to the next network. So I know that I need to block off some of those if I want to start at 1.10. All right, without trying to make that confusing, that probably didn't help make it more clear. Let's just show you what I mean. Uh, from global configuration mode, the way the DHCP works on the Cisco router, if you want to restrict actually assigning out addresses before you configure DHCP, the best thing to do is to go IP DHCP and you're going to say excluded addresses and from there it asks you what's the lowest IP address it's going to be 172.16.1.1 that's the first IP address in that first network range and then the next thing it says what's the high IP address so I'm going to say 172.16.1.10 and that's it that's that statement is completed we'll do the same thing for the second network and we're going to start with 172.16.2.1. Remember, these are 24-bit masks. So I know that's where my networks are starting. And the last address that I want to block off or reserve is going to be 172.16.2.20. Now, with those statements in there, when I configure DHCP, those addresses are basically reserved and they'll never be given out. And this is good for you to reserve IP addresses for your servers, for your routers for anything like that because you don't want those being in the DHCP pool. Now we can go into actually creating the DHCP pool and that's what what it's called when you're setting up DHCP on a Cisco router. The All the information contained for a single network is a DHCP pool so it's going to be IP DHCP pool and then we have to give it a name so I'm just going to name the first pool Acme1 because it's connected to the Acme 1 router and that's where all these addresses are going to be going to. 
And once we're in here, there's a lot of options. And this make, using the question mark really makes things a lot easier for you to learn. And even when you've become really good at this kind of stuff, it's something that experts use all the time. So based on what we need here, we need a domain name, a DNS, lease time. You'll find they're pretty much word for word in there. Here's our DNS server. Here's our domain name. There's our lease. So we're just going to plug those in. So let's, let's start with um, domain name. The domain name for this is acme.com. Then DNS. The DNS server is 192.0.2.1. Lease time. Uh, this one goes in days first. Uh, it's actually zero days because we want 12 hours. And then the hours. So 12 hours. And uh, we need to actually give it the pool of IP addresses that are going to be used. So in this case, that's going to be the network command. And it's going to ask us for the first, it's going to ask us for the network number. So that's 172.16.1.0. That's the actual network. And then either the standard subnet mask, or you can actually use CIDR notation. So I, I will use CIDR and take advantage of that. So it's a slash 24. So it knows that there's a block there, starting with the network statement itself. And with that subnet mask, it knows, hey, there's that many IP addresses I can give out in that block. And that's the reason why we have to have those excluded addresses, because it's not like a Windows DHCP where you could say start at this IP address and end at that IP address. Cisco doesn't have start and end. It just has network statements. And so it includes every IP address in that network unless you explicitly exclude it like we did at the beginning. So we have all of those things in there. That should be all we need. Let's exit out of here and create another DHCP pool. So we need um, IP DHCP pool and then the name is going to be Acme2 and we'll do the same stuff again. We'll do domain name DNS, lease, network, and that's that. So we made sure we did this, we made sure we did this, we, we have acme.com on both sets of pools there. We have our DNS server on both pools. We have lease time on both pools. Uh, da, 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 da. So PC1 can ping PC2. We're about to test that. PC1 and 2 can ping acme.com and da, 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 da. So the one thing we haven't done yet that we're going to have to do first, if the DHCP server is this router, it's going to be sending out DHCP directly to this PC. That's great. But when it hits this router here, it's not going to go anywhere else. It's just going to be stopped right there at that interface. We have to tell this router to pass when this when this computer yells out and says, "Hey, I need an IP address," and uh, screams out, sending those DHCP requests. This router isn't going to do anything with it. It's not going to know what to do with that unless we tell the router what to do with it. And the way we do that is, it's it, this is an interface command. And I just popped my window out. Oh well, we can work with it. So. Um, We need to go into this window. All right. We need to go into the interface that we're handling those requests on. So in this case, it's an interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero. And the command is IP helper address. And then the actual IP address for the IP uh, DHCP server. And in this case, when Acme 2 is talking to Acme 1, it's going to be talking using the IP address of fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. So let me go see what that is real quick. Zero slash 1 is 172.16.0.1. So that's the IP address we want. So I'm going to say 172. It's really not picking my mouse up very well. 172.16.0.1. One. And that's it. With that one command, we've now 
placed. I'm just trying to get that there. Uh, uh. It wanted to go back in there. There. <clears throat> With that one command, we've now said anything that comes in on this interface, because that's the interface we entered the command on, relay DHCP request to this IP address over here. And it knows about that IP address because it's directly connected. If it was not directly connected, it'd be relying on routing to tell it how to get to that IP address that we place in there. So it should work at this point. So let's go ahead and test it. So we're going to go to tools and turn on our virtual PCs. And we have to issue the command IP DHCP, which it's actually looks like it's, it's already done that for us. So PC2, we just pulled DHCP. Um, and it got 172.16.2.21. That meets our criteria. It said higher than 2.20. And then 172.16.1.11. That meets our criteria. It said higher than 1.10. And let's see. We did not put something. So we actually did make a mistake. It wasn't in the directions here. So I just kind of missed right over it. So let's show you what we missed. Uh, default gateway. We have to have a default gateway. Otherwise, the computers don't know how to communicate off of their own subnet and get off of this. So we need to go into Acme 1. And we're going to do IP DHCP pool Acme 1. And it's default router is the command. 172.16.1.1 done and 172.16.2.1 done now it's been updated in our DHC pool, DHCP pool but what will probably need to be done is that these computers are going to need to pull DHCP again for that to take place now some of the labs from the workbench will have you load like a, a script to check your answers and some like this one it's going to automatically kind of run it for me so it, it automatically types IP DHCP to get DHCP from this uh, DHCP servers it worked on both computers then it's automatically typing the ping commands so we can see that we were able to ping acme.com we we're able to ping mail and everything worked so we already checked our answers just by loading the PCs in the later labs, they don't really seem to do that as much. They'll actually have you typing either the commands to check it yourself or they'll have you type a, uh, a load check answers script and it'll check your answers. So that was it, guys. That was how you configure DHCP on a Cisco environment using your router as the DHCP server. It's pretty easy once you get some of the main concepts that are involved and using your question mark. If you use your question mark key so that you can see what your DHCP options are, it kind of it's self-explanatory just don't forget to put something you need in there like your default router so I hope that everyone was able to learn something from this video and that you enjoyed it if you have any questions I can answer put them in the comments down below if you have any ideas or suggestions to make the videos better put it in the comments below or, or private message me I that's fine too I get a couple of those here and there and other than that I just hope you enjoyed the video and want to remind you this was vicious and I'll see you next time